Hi, welcome back student. Today I want to discuss about the form 4 KSSM the question discussion. Okay, let's see the question. Okay, first one we're talking about the light. That's a one of the optical instrument. Okay, let's see the question. Okay, far sideness, they also know as a hyperobia. Hyperobia means inability of the eye to focus the near object. That means they cannot see the, uh, the near object, then the far object they can see. So this one is normally that happen for the uh, old people, the senior citizen. So the image they form by the eyes lens, they are four behind the retina. So from here you can see through the diagram. Okay, we go to focus. Okay, you see the diagram. They find the light, they are already behind the retina. So that's why they cannot see the... Uh, the near objects okay so from here diagram 6.2 they show the lens they use the correct sign of the person for the hyperobia so they put one of the lens in front so after that finally uh, the person who got hyperobia they can see the image so that means this one situation when I just add the lens finally the light ray then we focus on the retina so we see what they want Okay, now we're going to see the first question. Name the type of the lens we use in the 6.2. So you refer the 6.2. This one is a thicker at the center. So this one lens, we call it as a convex lens. Okay, number two, you need to draw. Okay, draw the uh, light ray. Continue the path of the light ray at the 6.2. So they draw for you when starting. So you need to continue until go to the retina. So that means your light ray when you draw later, you must focus at the retina. So let's see the answer how to draw. Okay, the light just goes straight. After pass to the lens in your eyes. The one is your lens, your eyes lens. After that, they will focus to the retina part. So they will concentrate both light will cosine on the retina. So this one means finally when I just add the, the convex lens, then the hyperphobia people, they can see the image. Okay, now we continue with number three. If the person they suffer the hyperobia condition is deteriorating. So that means they still got serious. Okay, that means the hyperobia increasing. So after that, they needed to better lens. So you need to change the lens. What adjustment you need to do to make the lens on the diagram 6.2 become suitable for the person above. So that means if the hyperobia condition increasing the, the problem, so what we need to do, we give the reason. So when you give the answer, you need to explain. So normally, okay, you got problem about the lens, so we change the spec, is it? The spec, how you change? You change the power become higher. Okay, when the power become higher means the focal length become shorter. Okay, let's see the answer. Then finally, if your power become higher, that means you can see the image clear again. So let's see the answer here. Okay, use a high power lens or you say the thicker lens. So if the thicker lens means the focal length become shorter, so they can refract the light in a bigger angle. So the refractor for the bigger anchor, finally you still can see the image on the retina. So this one is a problem when the hyperobia condition uh, increasing. Okay, then we continue with the B. They show about the telescope to see the further object like the star. It make of the two convex lens. Okay, before we go through this question, we need to think about the, uh, the structure of the telescope. Okay, first one, we know they're built by two power, uh, two convex lines. Okay, one is high power, one is low power. Okay, FO and FE is a focal line. Normally, for telescope, you must remember, FO is more, more, more than FE. Means the focal line for the objective line is longer, more, compared to the uh, eyepiece lines. So, if the focal line for the objective line is high, means the power must be low. So that means from here we can say about the power of the objective lens must be low. For the eyepiece power must be bigger more compared to the objective lens. Okay, so from here they got one table. They let you to choose A until E, the different power of the lenses. Okay, now you need to select the most suitable pair of the lens that can build the powerful telescope. So that means from this table you need to choose the eyepiece. You also need to choose about the objective lens. 
okay so from here we must choose the power for the objective must be low power okay the eyepiece must be high power so from a until e we just choose the maximum and the minimum that's the answer okay let's see question uh one four marks how to get it although you choose you also need to explain okay so at least you got four points because this one is four marks okay let's see the answer Okay, first part, they just mentioned the telescope that consists is a high power lens and also low power lens. So you can mention that one is a both also convex. One is high power, one is low power. Then you get one max. Okay, number two, you must mention the lens uh, for the objective is low or you say the eyepiece is a low. You need to explain. So from here, the objective lens has lower power. Okay, wow. Well, your eyepiece lens is a higher power okay then after that we need to choose lah so from here from here i find it the table c should be the smallest power so this one smallest power should be my objective lens so c is chosen that's the objective lens because there's the lowest power then after that we find the biggest one the biggest is a d so d also chosen because there's a highest power okay so from here you need to mention uh, what lenses they go to build number two you're talking about the power number three you need to choose which one is objective lens number four you need to choose which one is a eyepiece lens so you get four marks from here okay okay number two they continue they ask you with the aid of the diagram 6.4 you need to suggest and explain how to build the astronomical telescope produced by the bigger and clear image Okay, they want bigger and also clear image. So from here, we need to explain. Okay, let's see the first point what you need to mention. Okay, before we start, we're talking about lenses. Just now you mentioned already for the telescope must be FO longer than FE. Okay, so that means you must mention about the first image. Okay, from the objective lens, the light ray pass through. Then there we go to the uh, focus point. Okay, then when the two lines together, they will cosine. That point, when they just cosine, that one is a first image. Then you mention that first image, what's, uh, what's the characteristic? Okay, number two, you must talking. This one, first image, later we become the object for the eyepiece. Okay, then you also need to mention where's the location for the first image. They must locate it at the point FO and also FE. Then you mention the distance distance between two lenses that's a fo plus fe and finally you mention your second image what is the characteristic okay so this one is a structure how we go to build the telescope until you get the final image okay then we go to the first point the first point is a parallel light ray from the distant object after that where they go they go to focus to fo that means they convert to the FO to form the first image as a image one. Okay, distant object means very far. The object from the very far example for the star from the planet. So that's why they will focus to FO after they form the first image. Okay, now number two, the image will become what characteristic? There's a real inverted and D image. If you compare to the original object, there's a D image. Okay, number three. Okay, position of the first image is uh, at the FO, exactly at the FO, that become the object for the eyepiece. Okay, you mentioned the location for the first image and also mentioned the first image now become the object. For who? For the eyepiece. Okay, number four. Now the eyepiece you need to adjust. You adjust until the FO and FE, there's the same point. You see the diagram, FO and FE actually there's the same location. So this one is an adjustment. Why well, you need to adjust like this? Because finally, I want to get the image is an infinity. Okay, let's continue. Okay, number five. As the position of the I1, that's the image one, is at the FE. Now the final image I2 is produced at the infinity. So that's why your first image is located at the FE. And also FO, FE together at the same point. So finally, you get the image must be infinity. So that's why you see the diagram, the image is parallel line. Parallel means very far image. 
that means that's a result. Okay, last one, M6, you need to mention what's the characteristic for the final image. There's a virtual, inverted, finally must be magnified. Okay, this one is a second image characteristic. Okay, now we answer the uh, calculation question. An object placed 20 cm in front of the convex lens. So this one should be the object distance. The power is a positive 10 diopter. Positive means they're using the convex lens. Okay, now you need to calculate the focal length of the lens. Okay, so we count the focal length. We must using the power to do the calculation. P equal uh, 1 over F means the F must in the meter. So final answer, you need to convert the meter become cm. Okay, let's show. P equal 1 over F. So from here, we find it the P is a 10. So we go and choose there's a 10. Okay. So from here, we want to find P. So the F you move here, 1 over 10. So when get it, the answer is 10 cm. So uh, you can get 0 0.1 meter first. After that, you need to convert become cm. So normally, the focal length we find from the lens, we're using cm. But when you do the calculation for power, you need to convert become meter. Okay, so from here, we don't have any negative. Your answer straightforward is a positive. There's a 10 cm. Okay, now we need to calculate the image distance. Okay, image distance, we need to using the length equation. 1 over f equal 1 over u plus 1 over v. Okay, so this one is the equation. 1 over f equal 1 over u plus 1 over v. Okay, f we get already 10 cm. 1 over 10 equal 1 over 20. 20 is an object distance plus 1 over v. This one is an image distance. So now we need to find out image distance. So after that, you need to do the calculation. 1 over v, you move another side. Okay, so this one is 1 over 10 minus 1 over 20. Okay, so after that, I want to get the answer. After do the calculation, I get the answer is 1 over 20 for 1 over v. Finally, I need to invert that. I want to find v only. So from here, I get the v is a 20 cm. Okay, so now I need to do the number 3. Number 3 is a magnification. I need to find out what is the magnification for the image. Okay, magnification formula is v over u. So v, I get 20. U also 20. Finally, I get my answer is a 1. Okay, 1, what you can conclude about the image. The image is the same size with the object. That one is a meaning for magnification. Okay, then we go to the next part. Okay, next part is uh, chapter 2. Okay, related with the structure question. Okay, let's see the first one. Diagram 1, they show about the initial reading of the stopwatch, beginning of the experiment. Now the stopwatch, they are used for measure 20 complete oscillation. Okay, so from here, let's see the diagram for the both stopwatch before and after. So from here, this one is a before. So before, you can see the needle, they never start from the zero. They already move to scale already. Okay, then from the B, you find it. This one is a after 20 complete oscillation. I get it. The answer here is a 26. Okay, so we need to find out the scale, the smaller division. Okay, 5 to 10 actually inside got 5 small division. So every one division is represent one second. Okay, so this one diagram one, they start from two seconds. They never start from zero, they start from two. Okay, so that means later you need to minus back. Okay, minus back what is the actual readings. Okay, first one A, what's the sensitivity of the stopwatch? Sensitivity means the smallest reading. So the smallest reading here, it should be one second. Okay, one smaller scale is one second. Okay, now we go to answer number two, B. The stopwatch has a zero error. Okay, from the diagram A. So what's the reading for this one, zero error? So you'll find it the zero error is a positive. Okay, positive how many? Positive two. So from here, the answer should be positive two seconds. So what's the reading for the stopwatch in 1B? They ask you what's the reading. So actual, not actual reading, and just a reading only. So we straightforward read diagram 1B. There's a 26 second. Okay, then we go to D. What is the actual time for the pendulum to complete 20 
oscillation. So we need to minus lah. So you take the 26 second, you go to minus your zero error. Okay, so I get it. Actual reading is 24 second. Okay, then we complete number one. Then we go number two. Now number two is a displacement question. Amiro, they walk to the Bunchun house with the situated 80 meter to the east of the Amiro house. Now then they walk towards their school with 60 meter to the south of the Bunchun house. So the diagram, they show you how the direction, how they move it. Okay, you need to tick the correct box. Displacement is... Okay, displacement is got direction. So then should be the answer is vector quantities. Okay, so the answer is vector. Then we go to next. Okay, now we continue with the question. Based on your diagram 2, calculate the Amiro displacement from his house. They want to count displacement. So displacement normally from the starting point until to the ending point. That one we call displacement. We can say there's a shortcut. So from here, we need to using your theorem by Hercules to calculate the distance, this one, the last part distance. So the calculation is 80 square plus 60 square, then we go to square root. Okay, then the final answer, I get it, there's a 100 meter. That one is your displacement. Okay, C. If they're from the rest, Okay, that means Amiro when starting there from the rest, they walk to the Bunchun house and reach 30 seconds. So what is the, uh, the acceleration? So that means the starting point, this one. Amiro house start first, from the rest they go to Bunchun house. So this one is not related with the school. We're just talking 80 meter distance only. So from here we need to write out the in 4. Okay, first in 4, u equals 0 because you start from the rest. Time taken you take is 30 seconds. Then the displacement you travel, there's an actimeter. Now the question they want to find acceleration. So from here, you need to think which one equation you want to use. From here, they never mention is a final velocity. So never mention the final velocity, there's a third equation. Third equation is a S equal UT plus half AT square. So this one is a third equation. So your S is an actimeter. So ut, because your u is a zero, so nothing really, plus half a, I don't know, then a t is a 30 square, so become 900. So the final answer on the file was a a, okay, the acceleration is 0, 1.78 meter per second second. So this one is a acceleration. Okay, then we continue to question number three. Okay, now they show about the motion of the trolley. They show the ticker tape chart. Okay, so from here we find it as starting. Okay, you find the tape, the distance keep increasing. Okay, until this part, until one, two, three, four, until number six. The six ticker tape, they become constant until 30, 24 cm. Okay, first part, you need to describe the motion of the trolley. Okay, this motion, you separate two parts to explain. The first part, you can say velocity increasing. Okay, we check it, is it constant or not? Different is a 4, 4, 4, yeah. The velocity is increasing constant. Okay, after that, what happened? After that, they become uniform. Okay, first one, increase constant. Number two, become constant. Okay, you also can mention about acceleration. Okay, when starting, you can say accelerate. Uh, then another one, accelerate becomes zero. Okay, so when the question just talk about motion, you just can answer velocity and acceleration. You cannot mention slow or fast. Okay, so let's see the answer. Increasing velocity, then constant. So this part is an increasing velocity, then become constant. Or you can say constant acceleration, then constant velocity. Okay, either one also is an answer. So now we need to calculate the average speed. So average speed, that means you need to plus all the distance. Or you say all the displacement, you plus already, then over the time taken. So the time taken, you must be very careful. Okay, from here, one ticker tape, you go how many ticks? So you need to count. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, wait. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You got ten ticks. 
10 ticks means one bar should be 0 0.2 second. Okay, so one bar. So from here, we need to know how many bar here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We got 9 bar. So the time taken should be 9 multiply 0 0.2. That one is overall time taken. Okay, now error speed, we need to plus all the displacement. Okay, let's see here. Okay, 4 plus 8, number 3 is a 12, 16, 20, and 24. Okay, 24, we got how many bar? We got 4, so you need to times 4. Okay, time taken, 0 0.02 is a 1 ticks. Okay, after that, the bar, we got 10 ticks, so we multiply with the 10. And the last one, multiply with total bar, we got 9. So the final answer array speed is uh, 156 over 1.8. Bottom is a 1.8. Up should be, should be the 156. Okay, the last one, 86.67 CMS, negative one. Refer the question, they're using CM, then we're using CM. Okay, then the next one, you need to sketch. Okay, sketch by the VT graph to show the motion of the trolley. Actually, VT graph is exactly same like this diagram. Because just now we say about the velocity increase. Then constant is it. So when starting mass velocity increase uh, up, then become constant. So this one is the an answer. So when you draw, you must draw by two parts. So you get two marks. Okay, velocity up, then after that become constant. Okay, question number four about the motion graph again. Okay, they show about the VT graph plot uh, ba based on the motion of the taxi they're traveling the certain velocity. So we find it A, B, C, we got three parts. When starting the taxi is constant velocity. After that, accelerate. After that, decelerate. Okay, this one is what we can see from the diagram. Okay, first one, they call you to name the physical quantity that represent by the gradient. Okay, this one is a VT graph. The gradient should be acceleration. Okay, now you need to describe the motion again. So motion, either you mention velocity, either you mention acceleration. Okay, for the portion B. B is increasing. So you can say velocity increase. You also can say that's an accelerate. Okay? So the taxi accelerate. Okay, how about the portion C? C means a drop already. The gradient is a drop. When the gradient drop, that means velocity decreases. You also can say there's a deceleration. Okay, the taxi decelerate. Okay, we continue number C. Calculate the distance traveled by the portion B. They want B only. So B is what? B is a one of the trabezium. They want to calculate the distance. So distance means area under the graph. So you find the trabezium for the part B area. So the calculation, okay, half A plus B. Okay, A is a 10, B is a 15, then the height, that's a 10. So after that, I get it, the portion B, the distance is 125 meter. Okay, calculate the acceleration in the portion C. So they want to calculate the acceleration. Okay, so from here, the acceleration, sure, you get the answer is a negative because the graph already dropped, okay? Unless the question say deceleration. When I mention deceleration, you no need to put negative, okay? Acceleration, you need to put. Okay, let's check. Okay, A equal 15 minus 5, velocity minus. Then the time taken is take the 20 minus 30. So my final answer, sure, got negative. 10 over negative 10. So there's a negative 1 ms negative, uh, sorry, the unit is a negative 2. Okay, ms negative 2. So from here, this one is a deceleration answer. Okay, now we go to question number 5. Okay, question number 5, they show you two diagrams. Sure, there is a comparison. Okay, let's see the first part. They got 50 gram of the load. Okay, another one, they're using 200 gram of the load. Then they go to oscillate. Okay, let's check the graph. Okay, this one is a displacement time graph oscillation of the jigsaw. Okay, we can compare both also in 3 seconds. Okay, but this one, you can see the complete oscillation is more. Okay, we check here, got how many? 1, 2, 
three. We got three complete oscillation. But for the 200 gram, they got one and a half. One and a half only. So that means when the mass become increasing, you can find it the number of oscillation become less. Okay, so this one is what we understand from the diagram. So the first question, what's the meaning for displacement? Displacement means you can say there's a shortcut from the original until the end distance. Okay, another one you can mention from here. There's a displacement, distance travel in a certain direction. Certain direction means we fix the direction. Okay, then we continue with the compare the mass. So compare the mass understood, 5.2 is more than 5.1. Okay, the mass 5.2 is more than 5.1. Then we go to the next part. Okay, next we need to compare the period of oscillation. Okay, this one period of oscillation is 1 second. This one is a 2 second. So 5.2 is longer than 5.1. So period of oscillation, 5.1 shorter. Compare the number of oscillation. The number of oscillation in the diagram 5.1 is more than 5.2 because this one can do three times. This one can do 1.5 only. So the answer, number of oscillation 5.1 more than 5.2. And the last one, relate the mass and period of oscillation. Mass increase, period of oscillation also increase. Okay, when the mass load increases, the period of oscillation also increases. You also can answer in words, uh, directly proportional, but must write in full sentence. Okay, then we relate the period of oscillation and number of oscillation in 3 seconds. So when the period become uh, oscillation is longer, okay, period of oscillation become longer, the number become less. You see this one, one period, they're using 2 seconds. So this one is one period, they're using one second. Okay, but three seconds here, they're doing three complete oscillation. But this one, three seconds, they just do one and a half. So we can say in the three second, okay, number of oscillation in the three second can be increasing when the period for oscillation becomes shorter. Okay, so we check the answer. As the period of oscillation increasing, that means you take the time become fast, uh, the longer, take the time become longer, number of oscillation that decreases in 3 seconds. Okay. Then we go to the next one. What happened to the amplitude? So you find it the amplitude after they oscillate some time, they will decreases. Okay. You oscillate, oscillate after some time, they will slow down, slow down, slow down until stop. So you give the reason what, why this, this one situation that will happen. Okay, they cannot continuous in the same amplitude. They sure will smaller after they slow down and finish. So because of the damping. Okay, damping is because of the A resistance surrounding that will affect. Okay, affect the oscillation. Okay, then we go to question number six. Okay, about the motion of the ball and also the wooden block before and after the collision. So you can see before that the block is a uh, stationary the ball is moving to hit the block after collision both move together so you uh, sorry not together same direction only they never stick okay so from here first one before collision the ball uh, momentum 2.5 wooden block is a zero after collision the ball becomes 0 0.4 okay then the wooden block become 2.1 okay so that means finally both object also got moving Okay, now we answer the first question. What means by momentum? Okay, momentum is don't have any specific for the uh, definition. We just convert the formula from the momentum become the words. So there's a product of the mass and also velocity. Okay, product mass and also velocity. Okay, remember when they ask you what means, don't write in formula. You need to write in words. Okay, based on diagram 6 and table 6, determine the total momentum of the ball and the wooden block. Okay, so from here they want before collision. Before collision, what's the total momentum? Okay, total momentum just for the ball only because the wooden block is never moved. So from here your answer is 2.5. Okay, kilogram per meter, uh, meter per second. Okay, then we go to the next part. 
Okay, after collision. So after collision means we need to see these two part. Ball removing 0 0.4, then the wooden block is 2.1. So the total momentum is how many? The total momentum is 0 0.4 plus 2.1. That's a 2.5 kilogram per a meter per second. So they still same like the original, is it? So from here you need to compare. Okay, when you just compare, both is the same. So you just answer both situation that's a equal. So both equal. So based on your answer in 6B and 6C, can you state the collision about the total momentum? Okay, what's the conclusion? Sorry, no collision, and there's a conclusion. Okay, what's the conclusion we can make from here? Conclusion means before and after should be the same. So that one is a conclusion. So we just write total momentum before collision, they will equal to the total momentum after collision. So this one is a conclusion, we get it from the diagram. Okay, now can you name the physics principle? They ask about principle, not concept. So the principle should be principle conservation of momentum. Okay, state the condition they needed to order to apply for the physics principle you state here. So that means what assumption you make from this principle? The assumption here means we assume surrounded don't have any force acting to the system. So when it's just acting, we cannot say they conserve already. Okay, check the answer. No external forces exert on the system. So that means we still can use equal. If got forces, we cannot put equal already. Okay, then we go to seven. Seven is a one of the baseball player. They're wearing the glove to catch the ball during the baseball match. Okay, at the moment of the player they catch the ball, impulsive force is involved. Okay, let's see here what means by impulsive force. Okay, impulsive force is a changes of momentum. Okay, rate of changes of momentum. So that means changes of momentum divided by the T. That one is called it impulsive force. You also can say change of the momentum over the time impact. Okay, so this one actually are using the, uh, using the explanation through the formula. So you must say changes of momentum, then you put per impact time also can. Okay, now we go to answer the B. State the method can be implemented to reduce the impulsive force when they're catching the ball. So what what situation, you, what method you want to use? You want to reduce the impulsive force. So from here we see they wear the glove already. So you cannot give the point for wear the glove. Okay, they ask you about the implement to reduce the impulsive force. So when you catch, so normally when they just catch the ball, you your hand not exactly stationary there waiting the ball to come. Your hand will move backwards after that go to catch the ball. Okay, what's the reason you want to move your hand go backwards more? Okay, important you want to make the time become longer. Okay, when the time becomes longer, that means you can reduce the impulsive force. So from here, they move the hand backwards. Reason? To prolong the impact time. Okay, make the time become longer. Okay, C calculation. Now the ball mass is 0 0.15 kg. They move the velocity is 30. Okay, when it's hit to the glove, the time impact is 2. Times 10 power negative 2. Calculate the impulsive force. So impulsive force is a F equal changes momentum okay take the mass multiply with the velocity over the time so we show the answer okay 0 0.15 multiply 30 over 2 times 10 power negative 2 so the force should be 225 newton okay now they want to suggest the suitable characteristic can be made to the glove to protect the player from the injury through this one aspect. So the first one, thickness of the glove. Normally, we want the thick one, is it? So if you want the thick one, the reason is what? The reason means you want to reduce impulsive force also can. You can say you want to make the time longer also can. So from here, increase time impact or you say reduce impulsive force. Okay, how about the surface for the forehand part of the glove? Okay, the surface must be using soft material okay so from here they're using soft surface reason also same you can say increase the time impact you can say reduce
But when you just mention the first one, the second one, we don't repeat the, uh, repeat the answer. Okay, we're using another explanation. So either you answer increased time impact, either you answer reduce impulsive force. You also can say they absorb the force. Okay, the answer either one. Okay, then we go to the material of the glove. Okay, so just now we mentioned soft material already. So from here, we cannot repeat again. So the material normally for the glove using the ladder. Okay, example is ladder. Why using ladder? Okay, you can say about the ladder is a strong material. You also can say ladder can be last longer. Okay, do not break easily. Okay, flexible. Okay, another one is a long lasting. Long lasting, that means you can use for longer time. Okay, so this one is what I want to perform for today. Some exercise about the chapter light and also the force and motion. So hopefully these a few of the questions can help for your uh, learning for the physics. So just thank you for your watching.